Uh, she said, I just don't like the old bus driver calling my baby ugly. Looks as good as he does, that's what he does. I don't like him calling my baby ugly. He said, you know what you do? Can you go back up there and cuss him out? Call him everything you can think of. He don't worry about nothing. I'll take care of you, little monkey, till you get back. Now, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, we're going to do just a little bit of Mons Mabley. Just a little bit. Like I said, I'm stuck on her. Okay, I just want y'all to know that I got some respect for this woman. Now, many of you may not be able to see it, but some of you older cats, some of you knew, who, who knew about this young lady before I did, okay? I seen her before as an actor. I never seen her before as a comedian. And seeing her before as an actor is not the same thing because I didn't know that she had skills like this. Now, we're going to let her go on because I need her to tell y'all a little joke. Okay, I need y'all to hear this one little joke. So y'all hold on. She's talking about a, a bus driver calling somebody ugly and a person not appreciating it. And there's a drunk on a bus and he says, well, no, you go right. I'm going to go right on ahead and I'm going to go talk to that bus driver. And so you sit right here, you and that ugly baby, and I'm going to get right back to you. OK, so she's telling a joke. Hold on a second. walking down the street and met another color fellow. He was all beat up. He said, man, what happened to you? KKK? White Christmas Council? Who beat you up like that? He said, no, man, no, man. My own people done this to me. My own people beat me up like that. They beat you up like that for what? Is it because I sold my house to a Puerto Rican? I want y'all to know I thought that was hilarious, okay? Not because of Puerto Rico, but because of the so-called hatred that so-called people of color in New York have towards Puerto Ricans, which is why a lot of people of color don't like Jennifer Lopez, because there is this issue with people of color and Hispanics, whether they be Puerto Rican or any other culture, because it is a cultural thing. And I don't want to hear it. A lot of people, and that's not true. I know better. I've seen it all my life. And I've hated, hated it, hated it. Sorry. Got one more little joke she's going to tell y'all. Oh. Sorry, why you think she's saying it? Why you think she's joking about it? Why you think the audience is laughing? Because they know it's true. They got the joke. So for the people who deny stuff like this, you can't do it when the audience right there understood exactly what she was talking about. You can't deny facts. Plus, you can't change the future, which means you can't change history. minute they still laughing at the same joke so that should let you know how much relevance that joke had and that was 1966 you think things change woman had 10 girls on a hundred at night she get break up boy he says, oh my goodness, I'm so glad. Oh, he was so happy. He buying everybody drink, went on the job, giving everybody cigars, I got me a boy. Got me a boy, lad. Ten girls, now I got me a boy. You know, it's always some drag around me. <laughs> this drag say, hey man, come here. <laughs> he said, you sure that's your boy? 
you go out there spending your money buying cigars and stuff, you better go home and ask your wife again. He said, man, I guess you're right. He went home and said, hey, Becky, come in. He said, Becky, I want two. Becky, I don't want no food. I want, Becky, I whip your head in the ropes like over. I'm telling you, Becky. She said, that my boy. Don't lie to me, Becky. Is that my boy? She said, yeah, daddy, that's your boy. Now, I swear that's your boy. They just say you want me to, daddy. That is your boy. I don't know about the 10 girls. <laughs> okay? Now, that's why I like the woman, okay? Because her jokes were plain, simple, to the point. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this video, we just did a couple of minutes of entertainment. <laughs> anyway, ladies and gentlemen, a couple of minutes of entertainment. Got to get rid of this. We don't want to restore. We're going to... You know what? I can do the Firefox extension later. Okay. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to show you this document. Now, this document is a general response. Okay. We gave it a generic court name. We gave it a generic client. But it is a non-generic response to stupid attorneys. Now, I need y'all to... Hold on one second. I got to do something. So y'all just y'all just hold on. And we're going to get some music here in a minute. So y'all just be prepared. Now, ladies and gentlemen, although we played it yesterday, we're going to play it again today. This is Bobby Brown singing. Girlfriend, I need you right now. Love you and holding you, squeezing you tight. Never letting go. Okay, we're going to do a little bit of Bobby Brown. And... For those of you who weren't around, you're, you're too young to have been born at the time this song came out, or you wasn't a teenager at the time this song came out, uh, please understand, for the time period and everything, this song written by Bobby Brown was all right, okay? That's why he received the credit he received, because the boy could sing, okay? That's, that's why he had the fans he had. All right, let's get back to this document. Ladies and gentlemen, we have an attorney who responded to somebody's adverse possession. Now, we told you all about adverse possession, that you have the right to do adverse possession. We told you to do it against the property, the address, the parcel number, the mortgage note. And then you're going to add the bank's name. Yes, we are now telling people to go ahead and just add the bank's name. There ain't no need to go through the little hassles and little stupid headaches. Add the bank's name. And what I want you to do, besides just adding the bank's name, pay attention. Besides adding the bank's name, you need to pay attention. You're going to add the servicer's name as well and the trustee's name. You're going to name all of them in your adverse possession complaint. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I've done a video showing you the adverse possession complaint. It's been on YouTube. I'm not putting out documents, so no. I gave you the template on video. Follow that template. We gave you the case laws that you're going to add. Now, watch this. This is an adverse possession case law, but watch this. United States... One hundred twenty thousand dollars. Stop listening, ladies and gentlemen. We're not looking for this case right here. Okay, we're not looking for that. We are looking for the United States suing money. Okay, so we didn't find it that way. I showed you how I found it the last time, but I put one hundred twenty thousand dollars. It should be 127000 but we're going to do it this way. Oh, baby. I just need the actual case where the United States is suing money. Oh, no. It's a lot easier. Dang it. What was I thinking? No, 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 no. We're not going to do money. Oh, 
I'm sorry, I like the song, ladies and gentlemen. I want you all to pay attention. Okay? I want y'all to pay attention. Now, Daniel Goods, real property. Okay, we got that one. That's fine. Real property located. Okay? And this is the one that you guys can hold on to because you want to prove that real property can be sued. Okay? So, you just copy the title. You don't have to copy the language. You copy this section right here and you incorporate it into your document for your adverse possession to show that yes, you can do the property. You don't want to hear nothing. The reason why, oh, this is something in my heart. I told you I was going to play that. This is Miss Chalet. Okay. And I like the movie Straight Outta Compton. No, Surviving Compton. Sorry. Straight Outta Compton is NWA. Okay. But I love this song when it came out, so I'm playing it. You know what I'm saying? Pay attention. You see this lawsuit right here? United States versus real property located at Incline Village. Okay? You want to use cases like this, and this was 1997. They do this all the time, people. Okay? So that is you having noticed that you can sue real property. Okay? Let's get back to this one right here. We're going to come back to this in a minute. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this particular attorney is going at a 70-year-old woman. He knows she's 70 years old, and he's sitting up there trying to put a motion in the court talking about, uh, I'm going to ask the court to dismiss the blah, blah claim because blah, blah, blah doesn't know what she's doing, she can't bring this, and plus this is a foreclosure matter, not an adverse possession matter, and we did this, that, and the other, and I'm introducing this, and this, and this, and that, and the other into the document, and blah, blah, blah. Ladies and gentlemen, I only briefly read over that junk the attorney put in the record, okay? In response to a non-responsive by an attorney, and now, I have to change that. I have to now let them know, so I'm gonna have to put you guys in Michelle A. I have to put y'all on hold because I gotta change something. Hold on, Michelle A. Hold on. So give me a second, ladies and gentlemen. I have to change something. Okay, I didn't see that. And I proofread it, but I didn't proofread that part. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're back. I had to let the two young ladies know that they needed to change the caption. I proofread the whole document, but that's the only part I didn't proofread. So a response to a non-responsive official response by an attorney. See, he claimed it was a non-response, but everything he puts in the motion is a response to the pleading. <laughs> he's literally responding to the pleading by saying he's not responding. So we're going to do what the courts do. We're going to construe it as a response. Okay, we ain't got time to be playing a little stupid games. Now, pay attention to what attorneys cannot do, ladies and gentlemen. Objection to the unsanctioned testimony of an attorney. In reviewing the pleading by the opposing counsel, their response is indicative of the fact as required by law and their response is to be construed as a response to the initial filing. I object to the opposing party appearing through counsel and counsel offering statements that is to serve as evidence and or testimony. It's simply inadmissible. It's supposed to be, it is simply inadmissible. So the other two ladies are just going to have to have that little typo, okay? Not because of my opinion, but because of the Federal District Court and the Supreme Court of the United States judicially determined decision which this court must recognize. What the Supreme Court and the Federal District Court say? Well, ladies and gentlemen, they said a lot. Not that part right there. We got to go down here. We got to go to that box, okay? Attorneys can't testify. Statements of counsel in judicial proceedings, appellate briefs, or oral arguments are not facts before the court. 
The findings of a continuing investigation, which forms the foundation of major opinion, majority opinion, comes from May during the judicial process. Okay. Um, and see, right now, I'm going to change this. Okay, statements made during the judicial process. As we have said in other unsworn statements, of other unsworn statements, which were not part of the record and therefore could not have been considered by the trial court, manifestly such statements cannot properly be considered by us in the disposition of a case. United States versus blah, 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 this is the United States Supreme Court. Under no possible view, however, of the findings we are considering, can they be held to constitute a in compliance with the statute, since they merely embody conflicting concern concerning the conflicting should be conflicts concerning the facts as they suppose them to be, and their appreciation for the law which they deem applicable. There being, therefore, no attempt whatever to state an ultimate fact by a consideration of which we would be able to conclude whether or not the judgment was warranted. Ladies and gentlemen, the attorney is simply sitting up here throwing junk into the record and you must object to it. Okay? So that's what we do. We let them know that mother can't testify. Okay? It is a long-standing practice by learned counsels to place information on the record that appears to be factual, such as their claim to produce evidence. In this instance, the opposing counsel places before the court statements as to what it claims are facts, yet none of the statements are supported by or with the seal of a court, an administrative body, a state, or a federal government, or the federal government, and so it does not convey the full faith and credit. None of the statements made by the attorney could be construed as anything other than a direct response since it response is supposed to be response to the complaint. since it is a response to the complaint and must be construed by the court for what it is. I, this is supposed to be a response and non-compliance form to the complaint, a non-responsive form to the complaint. So a response and non-responsive form to the complaint. At no time, in the response from the opposing party, do they claim that their client has possession of the property or any right of claim of adverse possession? So I must hereby object to their response as non-responsive and ask the court for a directive judgment as a result thereof. Directive judgment, we're basically asking the court to direct that their response is untimely, non-responsive, and they have waived their right to participate in these proceedings. That's what I'm saying by asking for a directive judgment. Okay, do I? Do you have to say that in the complaint? No, the judge is already supposed to know exactly what you mean by a directive judgment. Because why? Pay attention. This document is universal. When I say universal, it speaks of adverse possession. If it's regarding something else, then you're gonna have to change this paragraph to fit the other situation, okay? But play it, pay, 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 pay attention. We tell the court that it must recognize their junk as being junk and the attorney as attempting to testify on the record and to sit up here and simply dismiss their junk, okay, as inadmissible, okay? We're already telling them what we want. We don't need to tell them again, okay? Now, let's continue because that's not the only time we're telling them. 
Okay, just want y'all to know. See, cause y'all gonna sit up here and question me, and that's what people have been doing. I have been putting together motions for people, putting together documents for people. Well, what if they ask me this and what if they ask me that? Read the stupid document and see that I've already answered that. Sorry. I know that they don't understand law, but the fact that they're asking me what if they ask this and what if they ask that after the document clearly has a response to those questions means that they hadn't taken the time to read it. Because it's a lot of words and I'm not using a lot of legalese. You can basically see I'm explaining everything. Okay, if you don't understand what directive judgment means, let's go ahead and highlight this. Okay, let's go ahead and highlight that. If you don't understand what that term means, then let's do this. Hold on. Look at this. You're teaching people law? I'm not teaching people nothing. Okay, the fact is, you people, that's right, Ross Perot, you people are supposed to know that. This. Hey, Alexander, what you doing back on my screen again? Alexander O'Neill, y'all. Not like Shaquille, that's Alexander O'Neill. Okay, uh-uh, uh-uh. You see what Google did? Uh-uh. See, it did all that data retention. We Data retention, directive judgment. Uh-uh, give me this. Okay, six, directive judgment. Okay, directive judgment. Six directive relating. Okay, hold on. I'm looking for a directive judgment within a phrase, and we didn't get that. Judgment of October 11, 2007. Okay, loss caused by the non implementation of a directive judgment. Okay, now, directive judgment which convinced men by a statement of possible consequences. Directive judgment case C-1, base company NB and Marvel star NB versus Minister Ed. And it's judgment. Now let's do this. We got to do this because right now we're pulling up a lot of junk. I just love this man because he shows people how to look up stuff. That's right. He says directive judgment case law. So now you know what a directive judgment is. Okay. Case law analysis. And we're looking for directive judgment in the sentence. We're not looking for directive judgment separate. Where it's highlighting the word directive. See, these are all highlighting the word directive. We don't want that. We want the word directive. Okay. Let me do one better. We're going to do direct judgment so that you guys will better understand the word. Because Google is not going to give it to you the way that it's supposed to be. In all cases, there is no question as to the proper judgment to be entered on the verdict for the court to direct judgment to be entered at once without waiting for a motion for a trial or any proceeding to set aside. We're asking the court for a direct judgment based on the fact that nobody's responded. Okay, let's continue. It, I'm sorry, ready for the world. It appears that the learning Wait, wait, wait. I am definitely going to have to do this. I read this and I did not read it. got to get rid of the S. It's the learned lawyer is failing to record something unique. That this is not a matter of, in fact, nothing in the pleading referencing any such thing as a foreclosure. This is a matter of adverse possession. And 
we gonna do that again. <clears throat> okay. It appears by the construction of the argument of the attorney that they are somehow attempting Adverse possession. I took this right here. Pay attention. That's what I put in there. So let's go back. Wake up. Maryland. Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't want this. You don't want this. I want the actual law, so I have to go to a law site. Now, we're going to go to fine law because fine law is a law site. Fine law. But no, we're not going to go to fine law because guess what fine law doesn't do? You see how it only gives us the general. It doesn't give me the statute. I'd have to uh, click on other things. I don't want to do that. I want the actual law. So if I find jurista law again, I'm going to go there. There it is right there. That's what I want. I should have just did it in just the law to begin with. And this is so that you know. So watch this. Oh, God. That is so simple. Look at this. Look at this. So many promises. Never to be spoken. Michael McDonald and Patty. Now I know what loving you calls. Now you have to talk in divorce. And we weren't even married. Uh oh, can't do that. I'm on my own, y'all. It won't let me do that. So, you see how it made all of it non. Bolden because it took away the format that was there. Okay. Within 20 years, pay attention, 
Everybody in Maryland think they have to wait 20 years because they haven't paid attention. I don't know the laws for Maryland, but I've always told people to look up the laws. It says within 20 years from the date a cause of action occurs, a person shall file an action for recovery of possession of a corporal freehold leasehold estate of land or enter on the land okay shall enter on the land within 20 years of the date of the action being filed exception this section does not a file uh, affect the common law doctrine of prescription you don't need to be caring about the common law doctrine of prescription this section does not affect the periods of limitation set forth in this blah blah blah, blah real estate property article Okay, we are not concerned about that. What we are concerned about, like I said, for the state of Maryland, we're going to use this. Because this talks about adverse possession. And it says within. So if you're in Maryland, you're allowed to do adverse possession within 20 years. I have somebody who's in Maryland who the courts have been blocking her from doing adverse possession, but this particular individual hasn't been following through. This particular individual has no income, so she can't afford to have somebody help her do this. And she's up Bandini's Creek because I'm not going to allow her to take up all of my time working on her stuff when I have other people out there who care about their stuff. She's going to be not too happy with me saying this about her, but I'm going to let you all know. She left out of town. She knew I was helping her with some of her cases. The mail was coming in. She had nobody, whether she had somebody checking her mail or not checking her mail, has nothing to do to, with me. What I do know is that when she got back in town, she had been back in town for several weeks, had gotten letters from the court, and she never, let me say this again, she never contacted me to let me know the courts had dismissed some of her complaints because she had failed to follow certain things and put certain things in the record. And yet she wants me to come and play Cap Captain Sable. I mean, I'm not going to do it. I decided, ladies and gentlemen, especially, let me tell you how I feel about Moonlight Day. What I decided I was going to do, ladies and gentlemen, is that I wasn't going to let you all do that to me. Put pressure on you. Because you're in dire straits. You're going to make me feel that I have to be in dire straits with you. I had a person tell me yesterday that I should drop everything I'm doing for everybody else. The fact that I'm a man of my word and everybody knows me for being a man of my word and being a man of integrity, that I should put everybody else on hold to work on somebody else's stuff. Boom. That person hasn't been completely truthful with me about all the events going on in their case. Ladies and gentlemen, want my help and you want to withhold information because you think that information is embarrassing, go right ahead. You're only stabbing your own self in the foot and you deserve it. Okay? Now, what we're going to do, because for the two women that I am helping, watch this. Wake up. Adverse possession. Adverse possession. All caps that, bold that, stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, what I did is because this document is focusing because the main focus here in this plea is adverse possession because the attorney wanted to bring forth something else. I want to highlight adverse possession throughout the whole proceeding. So that's why I all caps it and that's why I bolded it throughout the entire document. These are adverse possession proceedings, not foreclosure proceedings. One do not have anything to do with the other. Okay? So let's do the does not have anything to do with the other. With reference to colorable title, the record is clear. I have placed on the record of this matter the following evidence. The original endorsed note 
as required by statute. And we put the statute in there. Why? Because we want to show that the property has been properly tendered. When we did this, they were to go to the United States government for their money. So we put this in here. We don't have to say that. The statute says it. They must follow the statute. Okay? The ownership of all property is in the state. Individual so-called ownership is only by virtue of government, i.e. law. Under the new law, in return for government obligations, the money will be worth 100 cents on the dollar because it is backed by the credit of the nation. It will represent a mortgage on all of the homes and other property of all the people of the nation. We put that in there and we put the actual statute information at the bottom. Okay, this part, I get to add to each of the young ladies' documents because it's the only part that is of interest is what I'm doing now. The attorney for the opposing party is somehow claiming that the mortgage insurance company, which by operation of law is there to protect it against any claim of loss, and I believe they are claiming a loss, not the loss, but a loss, and let's highlight loss because they are to be protected against loss. The bank is saying it's had a loss. You don't get to foreclose if you made a claim of loss and thereby they have offered no further documentation of any right to be a part of these proceedings. And so I move to enjoin them from any further participation. Kick them out. Yes! Gerald LeVert and Eddie singing, baby, hold on. Okay. Oh, 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 that's the problem with that, and then I gotta get rid of that. They don't like it being so close, squished together. That's why it was giving me that radiant. All right. As was the intent of Congress by the March 9, 1933 Act, as documented by Congress, it is still in effect. The opposing counsel has no standing here because all that was required on my part was to surrender the interest back to the United States, which I have done, because they are documented owners of all property in the United States, personal and or otherwise. Sorry, my uh, computer is letting me know that there's some ABC news jump that nobody cares about concerning Donald Gump. Okay, anyway. And we, and I say a bit because I, that right there at number three. Anyway, and we have not seen any evidence on the record where the mortgage insurance has not been paid to the respondents and or they have not received the funds from the United States government as required by law. As noted above, the property and any associated mortgage is said to be a government obligation and per the United States Code, Title 18, Subsection 8, the United States Treasury is responsible for all government obligations. Okay? We ain't got to say no more. It's not our problem. Violation of sovereign immunity. The respondents have made a claim that it has a right to ownership of the property by law. The property, that by law is government property. The ownership of all properties in the state of the so-called ownership owned by virtue of government, i.e. law, under the new law, in return for government obligations. They are introducing the wrong claim to the wrong party. The respondents have not approached the United States government in violation of the statute. We put the statute, the statute is the 11th Amendment. I, on the other hand, I have tendered the mortgage to the United States Department of the Treasury and another to the respondent. Ladies and gentlemen, I definitely got to put y'all on hold. Y'all just got to understand, this call I got to take.
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, getting back to our Joe LaVert and Eddie LaVert. Baby, hold on to me. Ah, everything that you need. I like the song, ladies and gentlemen, the black and heavy. For my old days, homeboy and his son, Gerald, got together and they just sang a whole album together. And the wind beneath my, uh uh, we, uh uh, you're gonna look for me. I would love to play the rest of these individuals. But we're going to continue where we left off, and we're going to do some Babies I'm Ready, some Bobby Womack, some Switch. Well, they keep doing Switch, I Call Your Name. We're going to do some Tony Terry, When I'm With You, okay? And we're going to do some Patti LaBelle, and I have learned to respect. We've already done those, but we're going to keep going until we can't go no more, y'all. Okay? Hold on. All right. The gentleman I was just talking to, he was giving me some information, and we've been collaborating on a couple of things. He's been coming to me, and I've been making suggestions to him. He's been doing the research. I'm not the rescue. Not doing that with you guys. I've only committed to doing it with him because he was the first one who actually proved to me that not only was he following my suggestions, but he was actually doing the actual research and not just doing some skimming research expecting me to explain everything to him. He's actually taking the time to study it, understand it, look at the statute, re-look at the statute, look at the policy, understand it, and he's coming back to me saying, no, 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 I discovered this, I discovered that. And so, there you go. He is the person who is testing out the system for me. Okay, and it is because of him that we have been able to add things to the SATCOM program because he's actually, I'm telling him what I need, he's actually doing the research testing it out, completing it, and proving that it can be done. Got a couple of more things we're going to do, and but that's on a different level. Let's talk about this. I, on the other hand, have tendered my mortgage to the United States Department of Treasury and the United States and to the bank. And the respondents, see, and another to the respondent, ergo, they have no valid claim. See, the hearing for her tomorrow is on an injunction. They have no valid claim to be coming into these proceedings. Now, we've asked for an injunction. As we've told everybody, you should be asking for an injunction. She says, my right to adverse possession proceedings. While it is true, every person in actual or open and notorious possession of land under a claim of color of title made in good faith and who shall for seven successive years continue in possession and shall also during the same time pay all taxes legally assessed all taxes have been paid on my behalf as part of my obligation you're going to change this to 20 or whatever your state says Okay, but remember, all states are paid on your behalf because the bank, every dime they spend, they're going to attack you and say you owe that back to them. Okay, so that means you paid it. Okay, shall be held and adjudged to be the legal owner of said lands to the extent and according to the purport uh, purport of his or her proper title. All persons holding such possession so as to complete the possession and payment of taxes for the term aforesaid shall be entitled to the benefits of this section. Okay? This is the Washington statute that I incorporated in here. Okay? Because the person was in Washington. So we're back to whether or not I qualify as one having the right to adverse possession according to the statute, according to common law, according to the original complaint, I have satisfied all of the seven prerequisites for adverse possession. All parties having been served, 
the only one party to date having responded within the allocated time required for a response Un um, this is supposed to be others uh oh are in default these proceedings are for injunction to preserve my right under statute for which I have the right to claim of adverse possession as defined in statute. Now this one says New Mexico revised statute because it didn't change it to Maryland. Revised statute. The right to adverse possession is permissible by operation of statute, and this court, nor the opposing attorney, can bar me. It says in this court, it's supposed to be, watch this, wake up, neither go to sleep, neither this court nor the opposing attorney can bar me from access to the statute because of my dual heritage because of my being a woman, because of my religion, because I am not an officer of the court, because of my being a physical person and not a legal person. That's right, we're gonna start hanging on some words, y'all. So I must ask and place on the record that the court strike the response from the opposing counsel as unresponsive and inapplicable to the proceedings before the court, and that any and all testimony by that counsel be stricken from the record, and that any and all apparent attempt to introduce evidence into the record that does not comply with the full faith and credit, credit clause applies to all the evidence attempted to be introduced by the opposing counsel and each of the Wake up. Associated issues. Be stricken from the record. After being acknowledged as such. items stop listening as each of these items are without the appropriate seal as required by statute and are inadmissible and I object to be they're being placed on a record I want to get this record, song to on, all into all my record this court record yeah and I when it's cold it outside the, the aforementioned is wholly someone. accurate Presented first hand, represents first hand knowledge of the facts contained herein, and is presented before this body, attested, affirmed, and sworn to under penalty of the United States of America Constitution on this February 1st, 2018. See, they say you must swear under penalty. So we do it under penalty of the United States Constitution. The United States Constitution doesn't hold out any penalties, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, there you go. So this is for you guys who are having to respond to stupid attorneys. You take this document, you take out everything that doesn't apply to your case, you put in the stuff, the simple stuff that applies to your case. You don't have to explain everything all over again. You notice we didn't explain everything all over again. We didn't put in all the things about adverse possession, the seven prerequisites. But, ladies and gentlemen, I can't be in two places at one time. It's already a matter of record, so why would I mention that? See, too many of you are trying.
trying to explain everything. You don't have to explain nothing. You see, I didn't explain anything. Okay, I just made some simple statements and said, I object to that junk being put on the record by that idiot. Okay, that's what you have to do, okay? All right, gotta go, gotta go, gotta go. Just wanted to put this out there. So if y'all lonely, y'all gotta go talk to somebody else because I ain't got no time for loneliness, okay? All right, I got my own loneliness to worry about. So you just wait until tonight. Ooh, 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 girl. Gotta go, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all stay there, y'all stay on.